Okay, in this step, I'm gonna show you the basics of creating a form. We will have a whole series on advanced form building. For this use case, this is the basics and the intro for building a form. So what I did here, you click on database, click on forms, and we will create a form. Once you're in the form, you have this headline up here. You can click on the little gear to change that. You have your font family, your heading, and your font size, and then all of your formatting of the um, text in here, just like you would in an email or in a Microsoft Office or a Google Docs system. Uh, you can also add a label to it, whatever you wanna call it down here. Uh, let's call it a demo. And then you can even customize this with custom CSS. If you're good with custom CSS, that's gonna be more of an advanced conditions. You can add those logic. You can add logic here. You can do a lot uh, with these systems. So I'm going to cancel there. In here, you have drag and drop fields. I'm going to skip over this for a second because I want to go to a layout section first. So for this, when I format my fields, a lot of times I will use columns. You can do columns inside of columns if you want. So you can go four wide if you want to and make everything very crisp and clean. I won't do that. We're gonna delete this out of here. It's gonna give me a little, are you sure you wanna do that pop up every time? But I did that because now I wanna show you, you can drag the first name, last name, email, phone number, however you'd like in here, you can drag that out if you want. So if you wanna drag it out, you can put it like this and you can customize these forms however you'd like. Go down here to basic information, you can just put it in a text field. If you want to change this from text field to maybe I want to collect their driver's license number, I can put that here and I can change that out. Now, getting more into the advanced use cases, if I want to take any of these uh, pieces of data and use them in an automation, I need to go to the field section and we need to name this. So. So I would put license as the name. So in, when I see this in an automation, it would pop up as license as the uh, descriptor of this uh, form field. Text area, we can collect large pieces of data. Again, you can rename it. Number, I could probably have used this for the driver's license so we can only collect numbers, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter uh, because a lot of driver's license have uh, uh, letters as well as numbers. Password, if you're setting up a password for somebody in a system and you wanna pull that data, you can put this in here so that they can do that as well. If you want them to opt in, here's your opt in. You can do a selection. So that's a drop down menu. You can do a radio. This works really well when you want to route an automation based on an answer. So in here, I can go into my settings, I can go into data and I can start adding, maybe it's a yes or no question. Now, based on that response, I can route them down how I want them to go in an automation on the back end. Again, you're gonna to wanna to name this, okay? So we're gonna put the field yes or no. And now I'll know that's a yes or no answer. However these go, you want to always label them and make sure that they're easy to follow when you're working in your automations. Uh, you can add hidden fields. If you just want to input data in there, and you don't want to have it seen on the back end, you can add that in there. Uh, button, if I want to add another submit button, I can do that. I don't really wanna do that in the middle of this, but you can. Um, collections, you can put in multiple pieces in this collection, and you can use that. You can add objects in here from other components. I don't really use that one a lot, to be honest with you, um, but it's gonna be a container. Uh, maybe you want to put an image in there or something, maybe a file, you can do that. Uh, in here, you can collect URLs and it's already going to be in the form. So it knows that it's going to be clickable on the form afterwards. You can add date and time. You can just do a day, just time. You can add currency. Uh, you can do a file in here. So now that someone can upload a file, you can put a purchase. If you have packages that you want to put in that people can purchase, you can make this a purchase form and they can purchase right from your form. You can add a logo, uh, anything you want in an image, you can add to it here. Um, you can put an address file in here. So it pulls everything for the address. 
And then if you're doing any kind of document for a contract or anything, you can add a signature at the end. And all they have to do is sign. And then you can do a survey in here as well. And I've added way too much stuff in here. So I just lost, oh, there's the survey. So now you can do question and answer just like this. So again, we would go into data and we can add more if we'd like. All right, so this is how you would create a form. Again, this is very basic. I'm not going into advanced form building here. I just wanted to show you how easy it is with the drag and drop settings uh, to build one. We do have settings up here. You're gonna to wanna to name this, so we'll do demo. You can put a description in there. Uh, if you want to just have a message on uh, submit, you go to show a message. A lot of times what I will do is redirect to a URL and I'll put my booking link in here. And I will have that there so that whenever they submit, it routes them to book an appointment. It depends on your use case. It may not be the same for everybody. Um, you can change the width. So however this appears on a website, you can do that you can change the style I use so my favorite to use is Lux it looks really clean really good very easy to read on the website uh, it's one I recommend but you can play with any of those and choose what you like uh, if they're going to be put into a bulk email you need to have them opt in okay so we'll receive marketing emails if they are going to get SMS they need to opt in uh, if they are going to get calls, they need to opt in and then async will grab partially filled out forms. So you'll actually get the submission without them submitting the form, uh, on there. So make sure if you want to capture partially filled forms, you do that. Sticky contact is going to be, if they fill out a form multiple times, it's going to automatically pull in their contact information. So you don't have to let them do that over and over again. Uh, I usually turn this off because it causes issues sometimes, but you're, you can put it on if you have a good use case. Uh, most of the time it um, causes recurring form fill and then people don't pay attention. And all of a sudden we got false information in the system. It just makes my CRM uh, less neat and tidy. And so I'd rather they just type it in. Uh, email me for any submission. And then we've got email me for any submission. So it's going to automatically email me anytime someone submitted that form. We don't have to build out an automation for that. And that is pretty much everything here. Once we finish that, oh, you can also do a multi-page wizard. So if you go up here, you have your single page form or your multi-page form. If I want to take this and turn it into a multi-page, I can do that and then I can add another page. Click on page two, and now I have a blank canvas. So basically, you can create a funnel out of your form. Once they answer these questions, you can move on to the next set. So basically making pages, make it like a book, and then you'll have the submit on the final page. And you can even set up purchase options. So you can do sell products, collect donations, user-defined amount, uh, collect credit card, or give a quote and you can build all of this in here on the side. And each one of these has its own navigation menu over here so that you can choose. Most of the time you're gonna use sell product and then you can choose the product in here. We don't have any products built in the demo, but you can see it would pop up right here. And I'll show that in the advanced settings as well. And then once we're done, we save it. So we're gonna put this as the demo form and we're gonna save it. And then up here, you can see the live form link. So as soon as it's done, this is Lux. So you can see it's a very good looking form. You have stages one of two, and then this would be two of two. This would be however you put it here. And you can see everything that we dragged and dropped in here. We can sign, everything works perfectly. And this is gonna be one of the most powerful things in the system that you can use. Uh, this collects all the data for everything, as well as has API steps to get out of the system and into the system. So if you wanted to use the API docs, you can do that and you can create custom APIs for each and every form. And you can see, this is everything that we dragged in here. And you can see over here, we have the API docs. Everything that we need is going to be here. And this is one way that you can pass data in and out of the CRM.
So if you want to embed this on a website, what you do is take a custom HTML block, copy this, and you would paste it in and you would get a form built on your website. And then sharing the form, you can just grab the URL here and copy it and paste it in. And voila, there is your form. So this is building a form 101.